What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 94L that is currently continuing to approach the Lesser Antilles. We have a lot of stuff that we need to cover today when it comes to that. We have new models that are in, and a lot of the results are pretty interesting to stay at the very least. So now, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start with the NHC outlook at this current point. Here's the situation. Uh, uh, satellite images indicate that a broad area of low pressure located about 1,100 miles east of the Windward Islands has become better defined since this morning, and the associated shower and thunderstorm activity is showing signs of organization. Environmental conditions are expected to remain conducive for gradual development, and a tropical depression is likely to form during the next day or two while the system moves westward to west-northwestward across the central and western tropical Atlantic. Interests in the Lesser Antilles should monitor the progress of the system. Additional information, including gale warnings, can be found in the high seas forecast issued by the National Weather Service. Regardless of development, this system has the potential to bring gusty winds, heavy rainfall, and flooding to portions of the Lesser Antilles beginning on Friday. Formation chance in the next 48 hours is now back up to 70%. And the formation chance in the next seven days is at 80% right now. So a couple of days ago, we were at like 70, 90, and then it plummeted down to like 20, uh, like 20 and 70, and now it's going uh, jumping back up again. So this is something that we need to continue to pay attention to very, very closely as time continues to go on. And here's the situ and here's what we have with the latest. The track models since yesterday have shifted further and further to the west, further and further closer towards the Lesser Antilles. As of right now, the majority of the models keep it barely offshore. And if it continue in this, if this trend continues, well, it looks like the Antilles are going to be in for a wild ride potentially. And corroborating these track models, here's the intensity models. Intensity models, majority of the models agree to a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane at this point. However, the HWARF and H uh, FB, uh, HAF, uh, B, uh, B I at this point have this thing potentially making a, uh, this, uh, a run for major hurricane. Please excuse me for my stuttering right there. Uh, at the, at one point, and if we go ahead and show you the track models with this, the H wharf is a little further out uh, to uh, see than uh, further out to see than the majority of the models are. So this is definitely something we need to pay attention to. The have the H uh, the halves B, which is the other model we were talking about, is closer to the Antilles at this point, which is a little concerning to me, honestly, because if this thing ends up becoming a potential huge threat down the road, especially to the Leeward Islands, that could spell uh, some uh, some interesting s s stuff that's going to be happening, and it could potentially be a sign that this thing could be stronger than anticipated so that's right ladies and gentlemen we have a lot of stuff that we need to cover with the europe with the rest of the models but before we get into that as we get into this active weather period be sure to check out my friends over at prestige weather consulting they do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting cater to your local area for more information on that be sure to check out their link in the description down below and be sure to use the code predictor for 50 percent off your first month but with that being said, let's go ahead and get to the operational models. We're going to talk about those, talk about the conditions, talk about the hurricane models to kind of get a gauge of what may be going on. Because you're probably asking me, Patrick, you're saying all these things. You're looking at the track models and you're looking at the intensity models, but you're not sh really showing any of this stuff that's going on. So how credible is this? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is how credible it is. Here's the European model as of right now. This is the 0Z run, since this is the one that goes the furthest out at this current point today. European model has been very interesting. It's actually been on the weaker tr uh, part of uh, the model runs, to say at the very least. Organiz uh, organizing and potentially either developing or, di or dying off as it approaches the Antilles. That's what the European is calling for at this current point. So that's going to be an interesting situation, how that plays out, because none of the other models, from what I've seen, are even corroborating anything close to that. So we'll have to see how that whole thing plays out, but this will be something that definitely pay, uh, I, we need to pay attention to. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS model. GFS has been uh, quite interesting at the very least because it had it kind of organizing and strengthening at a very fast pace and then just pushing out and taking a 90 degree uh, uh, turn to the north even before it even got to, uh, anywhere close to the Antilles so we'll have to see how that whole thing plays out similar actually it's a similar situation with this except the GFS has shifted a little bit further to the west as of late 
So let's go ahead and show you. Let's go ahead and show you what we have with the with the, uh, what we had yesterday. Here's the GFS. It actually was a little bit further to the east and actually a little bit weaker at that current point. Here's where we are right now. Boom. A shift a little bit further to the west at this current point from the, uh, the GFS. So even the GFS is showing that shift right there. And as we saw with the track models earlier. Yeah, that's de uh, definitely a situation that we need to pay attention to. This is where we were at about 12 hours ago. We had the halves, uh, halves A, uh, the HMON, and a few other models, uh, rather outliers, having this potentially head towards the Antilles. Here's where we are right now. Boom. A, ma a major shift across m many of the models. The AM uh, AMI and the AV AV VNI are a little bit st uh, staying to the east, but the majority of the models are calling for a lesser Antilles impact at this current point. So that's just the evolution of that at that current point. So in the uh, but in the meantime. That's what we need to pay attention to. Next model we're showing you is the CMC. CMC model has always been rather consistent, in my opinion, and it's continued to show its consistency right here. The CMC is actually having this thing push. Is actually having this thing similar to where a lot of the models are holding it, having bringing some impacts towards the Antilles, potentially making landfall in somewhere somewhere in the Leeward Islands. We'll have to pay attention to it. And the CMC has this thing as a mid-range Category One hurricane, maybe upper end, 90 mile per hour hurricane. You can make a case for. That with that pressure and then it just mainly drifts out to sea after that at this current point in time so the cmc remains consistent on this as 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 does the gfs as does every other model that we've seen so far next one we're showing you is the nav gem nav gem has been uh, also another consistent run although it's been really consistent in early development and the nav gem continues this trend, although similar to the CMC, it actually has it bringing some impacts towards the Lesser Antilles. Potentially, a, a landfall is ruled not out of the question at this current time right now before getting pushed out to sea due to the trough that's inter it's interacting right there. So that's definitely something to pay attention to. And the nav gem is having this thing get up to tropical storm strength in the next 42 hours, which... I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. It's not really out of the question at this current point, but I would expect it to be tropical storm strength maybe in the next 60, 72 hours at this current point because of how it's organizing and how, how it's developing. And the, uh, I, But I will say there is a bit of a silver lining right here. The earlier this does develop, and the earlier that this ends up, uh, this ends up strengthening, the less of a chance of this thing entering the Lesser Antilles, unless we see an unexpected strengthening with this ridge right here that's causing that's ca that's dri really driving this towards the Leeward Islands at this current point. So that's the nav gem right here for you, ladies and gentlemen. Next one we're showing you is the Icon model as of right here. The Icon model has been pretty interesting to say the very least. Icon is actually pushing this further to the west than a lot of the models are uh, doing it, but it's also a lot weaker than a lot of the models to the uh, other than the European. At of course. So this is really a, an interesting scenario how it's playing out because I'm seeing the majority of the models keeping it around category one hurricane strength. According to what I saw with the intensity models over there, we just saw uh, you just saw them. We don't need to really pull them up again. And now we're going to go ahead and kind of really talk about the conditions of what may be driving this potential intensity at this point. Here's the global sea temperatures. 30 plus degrees Celsius waters from there all the way until it gets to the Leeward Islands. Although it does decrease slightly down to like, what, 29 degrees. That's, not, that's still more than enough fuel for tropical development at this current point in time. And this is going to be, we're going to have to see how this whole thing plays out because these waters this whole season have been very record breaking, especially in the Caribbean Sea where we're seeing like 90% of the Caribbean Sea having 30 plus degree Celsius waters. And I'm rather and the waters still over here are rather untapped. And I'm hoping nothing goes in there uh, in the last month and a half for hurricane season because that's going to be a recipe for disaster over there. So well, that's something to pay attention to right there. Here's the ocean heat content map as of right now. OHC map, one, uh, 200 plus in a lot of these areas in the Western Caribbean Sea. But where 94L is, it's starting to enter an area of 75 to 100 OHC at this current time. While some areas are seeing as high as 150. OHC near, uh, nearer to the Lesser Antilles. For those of you who do not know how much fuel it's like 175, 150 OHC is, let me break it down for you real quickly. If you have 100, uh, 100 OHC, 100, uh, 100 units of ocean heat content in a concentrated area, that's grounds for rapid intensification if, it t if the storm takes advantage of it. If you're seeing 150 
that's more like explosive intensification, which is two, an average of two millibars per hour, according to uh, what I've been looking at. Anything more than that, yeah, it's not going to end very well for the people that are in that path. So that's kind of a brief understanding of what ocean heat content is and the bare definition of it without getting into the more technical stuff of it. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a very big development right here. The wind shear from now until the Lesser Antilles collapsed completely. I am not making this up. I am not effing around. The wind shear completely collapsed. Now, we're going to go ahead and show you what happened the last 24 hours to give you a better understanding of what happened. This is where we were 24 hours previously. We were, there was a pocket of wind shear, of low wind shear, where this thing was in, and there was a, about 25 to 30 knots of wind shear uh, closer to the Lesser Antilles, as well as some stronger wind shear in the Caribbean. Now, if we go ahead and pull that back to 21, 18, you start seeing that wind shear. Like, look at what happened in a three-hour time frame between 18 hours and 15 hours. The wind shear pretty much collapsed across a lot of these sectors near the Antilles at this current point. So, yeah, this has been a very, well, all I can say is, uh, folks, that it's moving through better and better conditions as we continue hour by hour. So that's what we have with the wind shear completely collapsed all the way to the Antilles. So if it wants to take advantage of that, it definitely can. I'm still I'm still thinking it's it needs more time to organize, but once it's fully organized and once it starts going, if it takes con uh, advantage of all the conditions it's given to properly, it definitely can go uh, can start going, and that's why everyone on the Le at Lesser Antilles needs to pay very close attention to this. Now we're going to go ahead and lastly show you some hurricane models. We'll start with the HMON model right here. Here is the HMON. This is the 12Z HMON as of right now. We're going to go ahead and pull up uh, the, uh, the we'll go, go ahead and pull up the main sea level pressure winds as of right here. So this is what we have. Right here, organization development starts strengthening to a tropical storm in the next 33 hours or so, then potentially becomes a hurricane in the next two days. It starts to make a, an approach towards the Antille, uh, Antilles right there, makes landfall on Barbados as a tropical storm before uh, before starting to strengthen and reorganize again. And interestingly enough, the HMON is actually having this thing pushing further to the west than a lot of the models are at this current point because they're sh showing a potential Puerto Rico impact, although it's a much weaker hurricane. Uh, tropical system at that current point i'm gonna be honest with you the intensity on that looks a little bit iffy because of the conditions that we're seeing right now so that's what we have with the hmon next thing we're showing you is the halves a model halves a is uh is right here for 94l so here's the situation organization development potential strengthening up to tro uh, tropical storm strength starting in the next 48 hours or so and then hurricane strength in the next se uh, th few days and the halves a is actually having this thing making landfall in Guadeloupe before moving through the Lesser Antilles while continuing to strengthen, making landfall in some of these areas as ca a Category 2 hurricane at this current point. So everyone from Dominica North needs to pay very close attention to this, and they need to take this very, very seriously because that's what we have going on. That's the halves A. And very quickly, we're going to go ahead and show you the halves B to give you kind of a, a comparison to what we're thinking right here. The halves B is showing a stronger hurricane, but further out to sea, except, well, except no, not really it's a little a little bit maybe further to the east than the half say but still bringing major major impacts to guadalupe maybe dominica and then moving through much of the leeward islands right here so everyone needs to pay very very close attention to this at this current point and we will keep you updated here on the pat's path predictor channel be sure to hit the subscribe button if you are new it helps us out helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather and with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe